Hello folks programmers uh, today I would like to share together a Tomcat intro of how Tomcat Apache server is working so do not waste your time by long introduction let's get started okay first of all what is a Tomcat as a server Tomcat is a web application server for running java based applications so especially is made for uh, java based applications so at least you need to uh, to have some un understanding of how java enterprise edition is working so in order to understand how tomcat under the hood is working because tomcat is especially as a servlet container that's very important to understand because it's an open source and using as a java servlet container and servlet container considered the core or the heart of any java enterprise application regardless of what kind of framework at the end is using it okay so we are going to explain some core enterprise specs like servlet what is servlet what is a java server page what is a web sockets which uh, already included into a tomcat as an apache server okay and uh, tomcat will manage the life cycle of the servlet to process this http request and response it's very important to understand also it's used as a web server to serve some of the local files images scripts or any of the static files that you have in your local okay getting into the first part is a servlet what is a servlet as the core component of java enterprise edition which you need to understand that without servlet there is no java enterprise edition or java web application okay servlet it was a java server side technology which will handle the request and the response coming from the client going to the server then come back from the server from the back end to the client once more all of this is going through the servlet class of java Plus, it's used before to write HTML code inside Java method to process it as a response. But that now is not recommended at all. And before we were using it, before inventing the Java server page, which I will be next explaining it. Okay, each servlet has its own unique life cycle, which will be managed by the Tomcat container or Catalina or whatever you call it, the engine. And this, uh, as a high overview of this uh, life cycle, it contains of on init, on load, and on destroy. <coughs> a servlet it didn't understand any HTTP code. It will not know what kind of method, what is this get, what is this post, on whatever HTTP code you sent, it will not understand it because servlet is just a plain Java class which inside it implemented how to handle such request and response without even understanding how and why this HTTP code is here okay because it's just a middle layer between your application and the HTTP request and response we move next to the Java server page Java server page was invention to avoid the huge fat methods inside a Java servlet by this way you are having a representational layer for each java enterprise edition or java web application we have a separate html file but the extension will be instead of .html will be .gsp which allows us in the future to write java code inside html tags because html itself will not allow you to write any code or any java code inside but by the extension of the gsp will be able to detect some of the representational uh, methods like something like for each or uh, on uh, for example if switches or whatever what kind of message you are going to use to dynamically represent to hide the data or manipulating the data on the front end part each gsb at the end will be converted into servlet and that will be done using the Jasper component of the uh, Tomcat server itself will convert this GSP into a servlet at the end now we are moving into a WebSocket WebSocket is only bi-directional protocol that is used for client server communication and it will starting by WebSocket WS and instead of HTTP or HTTPS, our WSS for security 
and it's a stateful protocol as we explained it before on one of my videos about how internet is working that http is a stateless protocol so <clears throat> we have here websocket is a stateful protocol which means the connection will be always alive until one of of uh, server or the client terminated this connection it's used for real-time updates or continuous streaming of data uh, over the network something like chats gaming connections of real, real lifetime whatever the most inter uh, famous example of that is the phone call when you contact someone the connection between both of you will be always continuous to work in a, except if someone if you decide to terminate the connection okay after understanding the web socket it's time to move to understand the tomcat components themse themselves we have three main components in tomcat we're starting by catalina catalina is used to handle the request between the servlet and the rest of your tomcat container itself which will decide where this url is going to what kind of resources you need to get what kind of application inside your server you need to communicate with because in some servers you can have like a lot of applications so this request coming to which application exactly that's what we need to do by using Catalina it's such as you are routing to different servlets or different application inside your uh, server and we have now Jasper Jasper which will be the, uh, the responsible of compiling your GSB into a servlet also it's using in runtime Jasper will detect any change to GSP file and will recompile them by itself. It's like a watcher is working that uh, you don't need to recompile the whole application. If you are working on just the GSP file, you just need to type your codes. After that, you save it, refresh, and you will find your changes already detected on the front end part. So there is no need to recompile the whole application because Jasper will be watching that for you. Now we have Kuyutu. Kuyutu it will handle the actual HTTP connection, communication between them as a connector, you know. This connector, like HTTP connector, EGP connector, or whatever what kind of connector you can have inside your uh, server, Kuyutu will be doing that also to serve the static files that you have it in some places in your application, such as its folder or translation or what kind of static files that you decide to use. That these are the main component of Tomcat. Now we are moving to the architecture of Tomcat itself, how the architecture is built, how Tomcat is working under the hood. <coughs> we have a server. In this server, it will contain several services and also listeners and to interact with some events. A specific event is something like clicks on specific resources. If you want to catch these events, you can in the configuration file of your server. You can decide what kind of listener and what kind of events you would like to interact. It's up to your needs because you decide what this listener to do. Inside the server will reside a service which could be more than one service inside it. But inside this service, you will have a collection of one or more connectors. These connectors, as we explained before, like HTTP, HTTPS connectors, EGB or whatever what kind of connectors you are using it and this service will share a single connector at a time to response and request handling between this service and that will take us into the engine of Catalina and this is the entry point of your application this engine will receive the request and the response to process them as you can see here this connector will send the request inside the engine the engine reside inside it a host like 880 or whatever what kind of host you have it there uh, this is important the host but the host inside this host resides a several application or one application sometimes you call it context how you can differentiate between the application if you have more than one or just one application is by the forward slash that you can see it after the port number itself we explained that also in one of the videos about the anatomy of the URL. You can find it there. This forward slash will decide the unique name of the application if you have more than one application inside the same host. So you should give each application a unique name. By this way, when you got a request by the name of the application, 
the Catalina and the host will understand exactly to where we will direct this uh, request and within that request we will have another XML file or annotation or whatever to understand exactly what kind of resource we want to interact with so everything here it should be organized and understood and will be structured into a specific structure to Tomcat will be handling any request or any response correctly that will take us now to how Tomcat or servlet loading how the servlet is loading when we call a servlet by specific resources what kind of resources how Tomcat or understand these resources is representing this page or this image or whatever we are needed from this servlet first of all the client sent his own request with a specific resources with a specific application context name server will receive this request and will check the application and will send this uh, request and resource to the specific application according to slash you can see here slash resource but in generally before this slash slash resource we will have application name which will be determined and will be understood by the server to which application we want go or what what application we want to interact with after you understand the application the application will start invoke a java servlet but to invoke a specific java servlet we need to understand by some mechanism what kind of class which class we want to call from this hundred of java servlet classes that we have in our application by this way we need some sort of mapping to map each unique resource to a unique servlet here the role of the web.xml file or the annotation processing is come in hand because when the resource going into a specific application the specific application will extract the resource name send it into web.xml file this web.xml file will check the resource name and will start compare the names of the resources with a lot of java servlets if it's found it will send you the resource pack if it didn't find it will send you something like 404 page not found as exception so you need to check your resources once more but if we already checked inside web.xml or the annotation what kind uh, uh, the resource is mapped to which class we will call this class and we will invoke in it servlet the first life cycle on this servlet the uh, purpose of this init servlet is if you have a specific instruction you want to instruct into your servlet call before it's loaded so please you can do it here you have some checks you have some validation verification you want to add some information you want to subtract some information in stuff like that you already can add it inside any servlet before the request is continues to be loaded and processed unload the servlet will call a service which this service will decide and the handle what this request needed to do if this request is come here to do a get or post or put manipulate such data send such data whatever the request is doing inside this service we will handle the action of the resource and we will continue after that to send the response back to our client at the end of this process or this journey you will have the on destroy to destroy this servlet and to remove it from the container at the end by this way you are saving resources and minimizing the stack overflow for your application and the performance will be gets better after a while because we are using java application as a garbage collector will check if this uh, class or this instance of a class is not working it will just remove it and collect it because there is no need for it uh, that was an, a high overview of how Tomcat application work, how the servlet loading work, how uh, the web server understand what kind of resource we will call depends on what's already reside into web.xml or the annotation over the servlet class which we need to invoke.
by this way i have already finished my presentation i hope it was clear and easy i hope so and i will leave here a such a few links and i will also leave this presentation below the video itself link to it so please you can download it and use it as a reference or whatever you think is good for you i hope it was useful thank you so much for uh, your time to listen to it and have a great coding time see you soon bye bye